occupies Mars as a disastrous start, worse than when you burn a bacon batty on a Sunday morning. It was a monumental disappointment, really, because it promised to be a crackle barrel of a game, a sandbox survival builder on the red planet where you've got to build, nurture, and survive. But Reggie, being the stubborn sod that he is, stuck with it. And I'm glad, because once you push through those first few hours, the game manages to redeem itself somewhat. Question is, does that early start ruin the whole experience? Well, put the kettle on and grab yourself a cutler so we can all have a chat in today's review. Now before I get stuck in, a little heads up that this review code was given to me for free, but don't you worry my pedigree chums, because it's not going to influence my opinion. And let's not forget it's still in early access, so know that things can and will change come its final release. Likewise, Reggie will still give a review score here, because they do ask for you to stump up some cash. So Occupy's Mars starts off in that it practically shoves you into a ridiculous tutorial. And in games of this nature that demand you learn its intricacies from building structures, growing grub, and surviving the harsh conditions of space, I thought to myself, f**k it, let's give this a go, as I'd be a numpty to go in unprepared. Just like Frank the Mank did back in 94 when he tried to ransack his local HSBC. What a tosser that bloke was. Anyways, the tutorial starts in a fully fledged station that has been pre-built with all the bells and whistles. It all comes complete with crew who are stiffer than Ron Jeremy on Heat, who have as much character as a dead donkey. But of course, the artist did see fit to give the space ladies massive melons hiding underneath their spacesuits. But it's not the lack of life in this opening section that had me disappointed, but rather the absolute monotony of everything that you have to contend with. What's a bit peculiar here is that before you even start the tutorial of the base, there's a bloody pre-tutorial that puts you in a VR-like environment where it teaches you to walk, run, jump and pick up things like you would be a toddler. It's utterly ridiculous that games these days feel the need to do so much hand-holding in a pre-tutorial for the tutorial when it could have easily been combined together. But there you go, eh? Personally, I had to restart this and do this countless times, what with all the bugs and glitches. I'm talking items getting stuck in walls, falling down like a piece of shite for walking over a measly ramp and doors getting stuck on top of me. And once that's over, the other tutorial starts proper. And would you Adam and Eve it gang, the whole thing is basically just being my wife, giving you directions and telling you tasks for the day. Go to this place, click this button, now click this button over here. Once you do that, click this button and even though they're making you do tasks like harvest some vegetables, change a fuse, pick up a circuit board, none of it feels useful because the knowledge just slips through your noggin like a sieve thanks to its monotony and boring repetition. And just as I was about to quit this game and think of something else to review, it finally happened. A big bloody explosion. It rocked my base and all hell broke loose. Glorious stuff because here it asks you to leg it to the escape pod. Sadly, I had to restart start this entire section over again as I was stuck in a death loop for no apparent reason having fell on my ass from a two foot railing to my death but after scrambling through the whole piece once more I finally made it to my ship and here believe it or not is where the game actually gets good. So I land on Mars and I'm reminded of games like Subnautica or the Planet Crafter. Here you have your escape pod providing basic stuff in the form of oxygen, a 3D printer, a stash for the materials to get you started. I've got rocks to mine, water gathering spots and a place to build solar panels. And get this my pedigree chums, all that shit on the space station, all that tutorial nonsense, it counted for the square root of f all. Because here we are learning all over again, trying to understand some of the core systems. For example, I desperately needed to upgrade my tech tree and for the life of me couldn't work out how to get the experience points up. Turns out building the same crap over and over again gets you there. So Reggie would destroy and rebuild the same item over and over again like Bob the f***ing builder to unlock elements of the tech tree just to progress the game. In that sense, it does feel like the game mechanics need somewhat refining. 
But Occupy Mars really starts to show its true colours here, and that's no bad thing. It's at this point you have your first moments of appreciation of the game engine, how power and water interact with buildings, how the survival elements of space are a genuine challenge with brutally cold nights, with nasty storms and meteor showers raining down upon you. And if you die, you're out, mate. No respawning for you. Instead, you've got to go back to your last save and pick up where you left off. But let Reggie tell you this, it was a far more enjoyable experience, but I do wonder how many of you will actually get to this stage given its lacklustre beginnings. Eventually, you'll be building a rather nice base, complete with veg patches to grow food, scrubbers for CO2, and you'll be exploring the red planet around you in rovers. The building itself is pretty satisfying too, with a need to double down on airlocks to avoid a pressure blowout as if in a Taco Bell toilet. And as for lighting, it's proper pitch black as it should be, with every LED that you build acting as a bit of relief. Eventually you'll get some help in the form of little robots, and here you start to see how it all pulls together the sum of its parts into something far greater. So it's a bit of a bump back to earth then when we discuss the graphics. Now, Reggie and the boys are playing this maxed out at 4K on an RTX 4080, courtesy of Jolly Two Shoes and his 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, checking the stats as I played, both the CPU and GPU didn't seem to be utilized all that much. So the performance very much does have that early access vibe to it. You're going to get janky performance with stutter, slowdowns, lag spikes, and the aforementioned glitches and bugs. And then you'll have the animations themselves, which are as exciting as watching paint dry but less exciting. There is no feedback here to your surroundings other than the disorientating waddle of movement your character does as they walk about the gaff. The art style likewise is a bit hit and miss. I guess the best way to describe it is functional. It never wows and it surely is dumbed down based on how intricate your builds could be one day. So particle effects and lighting are as basic as a bloke in a shell suit and the environmental detail is bland. Now Reggie is opening for some serious optimization though because I'm worried how the game engine will hold up when you lot start building those massive bases. Occupies Mars then is not so much an ugly game per se but rather the Honda Civic of graphics. It does what it needs to do without setting the world on fire. Sound is another mixed bag situation. There are times where it's beautifully crafted with a great musical score that makes you feel like you're in a proper sci-fi movie which houses little riffs and melodramatic tones that could have come straight out of a space odyssey. In fact, it almost feels like being in Blade Runner at times, and it has that vibe of truly being stranded on the red planet miles away from anyone else as you struggle for survival. And then, out of nowhere, you get this 1920s saloon music, like you've just stumbled into a Wild West bar and hollered, yeah, boys, before slamming your rooting tooting drill into a rock. It's mental to Reggie that they've got this type of music in there, when really, that's associated with games like Gas Station Simulator or Hardship Breakers, where it makes far more sense. And the way music fades in and out is just as jarring, stopping and starting abruptly. There's a lot of room for improvement, but I, for one, much prefer the more serious space theme music than I do the Arthur Morgan nonsense. As for sound effects, I hope it's just that they are not implemented yet, as everything here is so lifeless. Not enough little ambient sounds, in particular around footsteps, where I'd love to have heard the crunch of the red sand below me. Again, early access vibes are all over here. So blimey then, Occupies Mars is a tough one to judge. It starts off as being a dog's dinner, where it was set to get the lowest score I've ever given on this channel. But as the hours pushed on, it started to grow on me like mould. It wasn't pleasant, but it certainly had me noticing. Listen, Occupies Mars has a great core concept with great decent game systems in place, but it has as many holes as a Czech adult video. However, as more content is added, you could be looking at a diluted version of Satisfactory mixed with the vibes of Subnautica. It lacks in a lot of areas both graphically and sound-wise, but it does show you glimpses of what could be. For Reggie's money, even as early access goes, it's probably worth it at around the $15 mark, if this is your sort of thing, but with the Planet Crafter offering a more refined experience for early access with a similar concept, this one becomes a little bit trickier to recommend. Perhaps then it's best to add to your wish list, see how this one progresses, because if they get it right, the developers Pyramid Games could be onto a winner here. And with that, my lovelies, Reggie out.